let's evaluate the following limits graphically. So for the limit as x goes to 0, we can see from the left hand side that the function approaches infinity. And as x approaches 0 from the right hand side, the function also approaches infinity. So while the function approaches the same value from both sides, it is still unbounded. And therefore we can say the limit does not exist. Now as x approaches infinity, we can see that the function gets closer and closer to 0, so the limit's going to be 0. And also if we observe as x approaches minus infinity, the function also approaches 0. Let's evaluate the following limit numerically. Well as x approaches minus 3 from the left hand side, let's write a few values of x that get closer and closer to 3 from the left. And as x approaches minus 3 from the right hand side, we'll write a few values of x that get closer to minus 3 from the right hand side. And calculating x cubed for each of these values, so this is enough to convince us that the function approaches minus 27 from the left hand side and also minus 27 from the right hand side. So therefore this limit evaluates to negative 27. Let's evaluate this limit of a rational polynomial expression. So if we substitute 1 into this expression, we get 0 on 0, and that doesn't give us enough information to evaluate the limit. So because we've got a quadratic in the numerator, we can try to factorize it. And now we can see that the x minus 1 cancels. So we'll see later that this is a removable discontinuity. And therefore this limit evaluates to 1 minus 6 or minus 5. So as x gets closer and closer to 1, the function approaches negative 5. And you can plug in a number that's very close to 1 in your calculator to verify this. Let's evaluate this one-sided limit as x goes to infinity. So here we can multiply by the reciprocal of the fastest growing term to get an equivalent algebraic expression. So if we multiply each term by this reciprocal, we obtain the following limit. And now we can apply the quotient limit theorem and the sum and difference theorems to evaluate the limit of each of these terms individually. So as x goes to infinity, these terms all go to zero. And therefore we're left with 0 on 52, which is 0. So this is expected because the fastest growing term is in a denominator. Let's evaluate the following limits. So the limit as x goes to 0 can be evaluated by taking the limit from both sides of 0. So if x approaches 0 from the left hand side, we can see that the function approaches minus infinity. And as x approaches 0 from the right hand side, the function goes to positive infinity. So therefore because the function approaches two different values from both sides, then the limit does not exist. Now as x approaches infinity, the function approaches 0. And in contrast, as x approaches minus infinity, we can see that the function approaches 0 below the x-axis but minus zero is still zero. We have a one-sided limit where x approaches infinity, so we multiply by the reciprocal of the fastest growing term to get an equivalent algebraic expression. So multiplying each term by this reciprocal, we obtain the following limit. And now we can apply the quotient limit theorem and the sum and difference theorems to evaluate the limit of each term separately. So as x approaches infinity, these terms all approach 0. So therefore we get 1 on 0, 
and this tells us that the function is unbounded, which is expected because the fastest growing term is in the numerator. Let's evaluate the limit of this piecewise function as x approaches 3. So we need to check if the limit as x approaches 3 from the left hand side exists. So from the left hand side, we use this function. And substituting 3, we get 12 minus 3, which is 9. And we also need to check the limit as x approaches 3 from the right hand side. So we use this function definition to do that. So we have 3 squared plus 5, which is 14. So the limits from both sides of 3 are not equal, and therefore this limit does not exist. Let's evaluate this limit. So because x appears in the base and the exponent, we can use the exponential function and logarithms to simplify this limit. So what we'll do is take e to the natural log of x to the power of 1 on x. And because the exponential function is continuous, we can take the limit inside the function. And using the rules for logarithms, we can take the exponent outside the log. So we have the natural log of x on x. And because x grows faster than the natural log of x, as x goes to infinity, we obtain a limit of 0. And therefore e to the 0 is 1. Let's evaluate the limit of this rational polynomial function as x goes to infinity. So what we do is multiply this by the reciprocal of the fastest growing term to obtain an equivalent algebraic expression. So multiplying each term by 1 on x to the 9 gives the following limit. So applying the quotient theorem and the sum and difference theorems we can evaluate the limit of each term separately. So as x goes to infinity, these terms all disappear. And therefore we obtain 3 on 18, which is 1 on 6. So it's expected that we've got a finite limit, because the fastest growing term is in the numerator and the denominator. Let's evaluate the limit of this function as x goes to infinity. So because x appears in the base and the exponent, we can apply the exponential function and natural log to simplify the limit. And because the exponential function is continuous, we can assume it's continuous at the limit of the natural log. And we can apply the rules for logarithms to put this exponent outside of the natural log and apply the product rule for limits to split this up into two limits. And doing a bit of algebra, we can write the natural log of 1 minus 3 on x. So as x approaches infinity, this term approaches 0, and this term approaches 0, and the natural log of 1 is 0, so we effectively obtain e to the 0, which is 1. Let's evaluate this one-sided limit of a function with exponential terms and polynomial terms, as x goes to infinity. So what we do is multiply by the reciprocal of the fastest growing term. While x is in the exponent, so 8 to the x is the fastest growing term. And multiplying every term by the reciprocal, we obtain the following limit. And now we can apply our quotient theorem and sum and difference theorems to evaluate the limit of each term separately. So as x goes to infinity, all these terms disappear. And we obtain minus 1 on 0, which tells us that the function is unbounded. Let's evaluate the following limit. Well, we can apply the rules for logarithms to put the exponent outside the natural log and apply the product rule for limits to split the limit up into two. And doing a bit of algebra, inside the natural log, we have 1 half minus 1 on 2x. And by continuity of the natural log, we can take the limit inside the natural log 
or simply recognise that as x goes to infinity, this term goes to 0, and therefore this limit gives the natural log of 1 half. And on the left, as x goes to infinity, this term goes to 0. So therefore this limit evaluates to 0. Let's evaluate the following limit. So we have the limit as h goes to 0, and we'll expand the term in the brackets. So we have 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared and minus 3x squared divided by h. And 3x squared cancels and h also cancels. So we obtain the following limit. And therefore as h goes to 0, this term disappears and we end up with 6x.